Sorry, gang. Two videos again. Anytime that my puppy touches my computer when we're doing this, we get a boo-boo. So, no worries. Gives you a little bit of time. So, you are going to have your yellow piece of paper, and you're going to have your science pieces here. I'm going to move this over here so you can see us at our workstation. Okay. Oh, my, Miss Rash. You forgot to do remember for the two. Two. Hair dryer is sports. Okay. I went a little bit fast. Um, we'll come back to that. Okay, so I'm going to continue on with art science. So today, your yellow piece of paper, and I'm going to ask you right now, as we're moving, you are going to glue your flower. Now, I've already colored mine. You are expected to color your um, flower today. So right now, you are going on those outside edges of your paper. Remember, we do not just go on the inside. And again, I'm sorry, Miss Rash already has hers on a yellow piece of paper. I'm remounting it. But we just so don't don't put glue just right here. We're doing the edges. I've told you that. That way it'll stick well onto your paper. Please do that right now. And I'm going to show you where I'm putting mine so I have enough room for the title of my poster. So right now, here we go. My paper is on there. I have room on the top for my title page. And this says parts of a flower. We are labeling a flower today. And that is a huge part of being a scientist is labeling things so people can understand what you're talking about when you're doing what I call research. And again, we are researching and learning about flowers right now in science, right? So right now, you are going to take your parts of a flower. Again, we're doing the outside edges. It does not do too much good if you only put glue here because these, these edges will flop around. So go ahead, put your glue on your paper right now. I'm doing mine as well. I'm doing my outside edges of my paper. I glued the outside pieces. And now I'm just putting it right on the top of my paper. So you should have your title and you should have your flower underneath it. So as I told you the other day, um, it's very important that the flower has all of its parts, right? It, it, it's a process from the seed. It starts with the seed, as we are talking about in our germinating, where did my germinating seeds go? In our seeds, I've told you that, right? It all starts from here, our seed. We are starting to see the very first root come out of these seeds right now in this germinating process. And that's this, right here, the roots. Then I told you the roots create, boom, 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 the stem. The stem is the highway where the food comes from. The water comes from the ground, goes in here, and it gets all it needs, its food from here, and it goes up this highway, and then it goes into the leaves, and then also the flower, okay? So these parts of the flower are very, very important. Without these different parts, the flower would not live. It would die. So we are going to label it because it's that important. So for writing today, we are going to be labeling the parts of a flower. We're doing it together right now. So if you don't have something to write with, you may go get something very quickly. And we're going to do it together. So... I will give you just one moment to get ready, and I'm also going to get my pen. Miss Rash is writing in pen. You can write in pencil first, and then if you want to go back when you're coloring it, go back and um, redo it. You can, right? Okay. So when scientists label something, they often will have a line coming down from that object or that piece of it to show them what they're talking about. So here are your roots. Right? I'm going to take a line. I'm going to go from this one right here. I'm just going to take my line out here with a little arrow. You do not have to do the arrow. So a line with a line and a line if you want. Now I'm going to write the word what? Roots. We're labeling this part of the flower. Roots. Let's do it together. Are you ready? R. 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 Ooh, I'm already making that O, double O, so that means two O's, O, O, so right now you should have R, O, O, T, T, 
I made a lowercase like Jesus's cross. You can do upper or lowercase. I'm okay with that. R U S roots. Good. If you're writing a little bit bigger, just make sure you're on this bottom part. Do not write too big. We still have to label a couple of different places, okay? So we've done the roots. What did I tell you was next? The stem. Now I'm going to take my line and I'm going to take it from over here and I'm going to bring it over to here. Now I'm going to stop here so I have room to write, okay? We need to be able to write four letters. So I'm going to go right through here, which is okay. Zoom. And I'm doing an arrow. You do not have to do an arrow. A line is fine. We're going to write the word stem. Start with your S, small curve, and then whip it around. T, 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 E, F, E. So if you're doing a lowercase e, it's out, up, and around. You already know uppercase e is down, across, across, across. And then your M. I'm going to continue working on the uppercase M. So straight line down, lift, down, up, and down. St -e -m. Stem. Okay, so now we've labeled the two parts so far. Roots and stem. Now, we have two more parts. We have the flower. And we have, or excuse me, the leaf and the flower, okay? So leaf is kind of a longer one. I think if we come up like this, we're going to have room to write it. So I'm just going like this with a small line, leaf. Four letters, here we go. Oh, E. There is a silent A. An A you cannot hear. And then leaf, f, f, F is at the end. As you see, I'm doing lowercase. You need to be doing probably more uppercase if I haven't introduced all your letters, but do what you're comfortable with. So now we have roots, stem, leaf. Here's our very last one. We're going to write it up here on the top. It's okay if you get on your yellow poster board, right? We're labeling the F -f flower. I'm going to go up like this and push it up. My arrow is over here. I put it onto the flower so people will know that's what I'm talking about. Flower. F, F, F. O. F, A. W, W. W. Down, up, down, up. Flower. Er. You only hear the R. There's a silent E. I'm just telling you. And then flower. Er, er, er. We have that R at the end. Flower. Excellent. Okay, guys. By the way, this is actually really big kindergarten stuff. I'm really impressed that you're doing this. So um, you have just labeled a scientific poster. I am expecting you to color it. Your favorite flower color or whatever you want it to be. This is the very beginning process of what you're doing here with your seeds. Okay, next week I'm getting some dirt and some other things together for you. You're going to be planting. You're going to be real scientists and figuring out what makes a, a flower grow, really. Okay, I would like your poster completely colored. That is part of your handwriting and fine motor today. So please uh, make sure to do that. If you need help with your words, you may always re-watch the video and do it again with me or ask a parent to help you, okay? So now, really quickly, we are going to be doing your math together. Um, it's this one. You are going to color it afterwards. We're not coloring it first. We're going to be gluing them in together. So right now, get your scissors out and cut off your bottom piece. I'm doing it as well. I'm cutting out these animal characters. You're going to need your glue. I want you to cut them all out right now and have them laying in front of you. And I'll give you a moment to do that. I'm doing it as well. And 
and I'm going to lay them down. And I'm going to get myself organized while you finish cutting those. So when you're done, you should have your paper laid out and you should have all of your characters in front of you. There is an elephant, a flamingo, a gorilla. I like him, by the way. Um, a giraffe and a sloth. I like sloths. I saw a real sloth when I was on a vacation in Costa Rica. It was beautiful. Okay, so you um, are going to be putting these in what I call ordinal numbers. We've been talking about it. I've been putting those that word into your head. Um, when we count, we do not use ordinal numbers. We just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's just counting. Ordinal numbers are used in races. They're used when we do our dates. They're used when you're keeping things in order. Okay? So right now I have my characters laid out in front of me. And I'm going to read you the directions. So you better be ready. Got your glue? I'm going to read you the very first part of this. And it's going to tell you which box to put this in. I am going to try to trick you. I am not doing it in order on purpose. I want to see if you're listening if you and if you can figure out how to know which box I am talking about. I'm going to go through this one right here because we always read from left to right. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. We're going to do it one more time. Put your fingers on the boxes. I want you to really see this so I don't trick you because I know you're smart. Here we go. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay, here is your first job. Find your sloth. Glue your sloth in the second box. Glue your sloth in the second box. Go. What's second? First, second, boom. Here's my glue. I glue onto my paper, and then I push my sloth on top. Good job. Here's your next um, direction. Glue the flamingo in the fifth box. The fifth box. How do you figure out where the fifth box is? You start from the beginning, and you say it, and you go first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Go. Here you go, Flamingo. Okay. So right now, I have a sloth in the, sec or the second position, and I have a Flamingo in the fifth position. Here is my next um, direction. Glue the giraffe in the first box. Glue the giraffe in the first box. Go. Hmm. First. Number one, right? First. There we go. There's my giraffe. So right now, you should have three characters on your board. You have a character in the first and the second spot and the fifth spot. Here is your next direction. Glue the elephant in the third box. Glue the elephant in the third box. Go. What is third, first, second, and third? Do you see how Miss Rash always goes back to her starting point if I'm not sure? Absolutely. That's how you double check your work. You always want to if you're not, you're like, hmm. You go back and you always double check. And you're like, oh, it instantly goes there. But wait a minute. You do not know that for sure. It, the direction could be tricking you. You always have to hear the last direction before you do the work. And let's see what it says. Oh, glue the gorilla in the fourth box. Okay. Is that a, yep, that's a gorilla. And he is in the first, second, third, and fourth box. Good job. So I wanted to do this one with you. You're going to get another paper like this next week, and I'm not going to help you on it. You're going to do it on your own, and then I want to see what you can do. But I wanted to review a little bit with you. Please go back and color um, your little animals. That's a lot of fun. And when I do give you dittos like that, when you color, it is part of your fine motor, and we're really working on making our hands stronger. Okie dokie, gang. 
um, that is it for today. Happy Wednesday to you. Please go out and let your light shine and just be the best that you can be. I really enjoyed seeing your measurement, by the way. Oh, my goodness, Miss Rash. As always, you do this. I'm so sorry. Here is another challenge for you. The string that I gave you was another piece that I'm going to want you to start using for measurement. So if you have not used your string yet, you can grab it. There is an end. Pull out. Don't pull it all out. Or you're going to have so much string and you'll have to put it somewhere, right? And I want you to go. And I would like you to measure three different things. I'm going to give you two things to measure. And the third one I want you to measure on your own, okay? I want you to measure how wide one of your windows is. So you're going to measure from one side to the other. Wide is going across. So you're going to go up to your window. You'll take the end of this. And I just want you to see how long it is. I also would like you to measure how tall your countertop is with this. So this part will go on to the floor in your kitchen. And then bring your string all the way up to that countertop where you lay things. And see how long that is. And then I want you to measure one other thing, anything you want. And you can let me know what that is, okay? So have fun. Be your best, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.